So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ken Pavick. I'm the Door County Administrator. I'd like to welcome you all to our building dedication. I appreciate that you made it out for today. It's actually awesome to see the sun out, uh, a sign of <coughs> hopefully good things to come far as our fall. Uh, <coughs> again, we're here today to actually celebrate our, as you can see, a beautiful project that came together over multiple years. And I guess we'd like just to kind of maybe present that story and just show how it all came together. So just to start, what I'd like to do is um, have several individuals maybe just speak and also provide some insight in terms of the significance of this building on our community and our county. So I'd like to start with uh, Caleb Frostman. He is our state senator for our region. And again, our region is considered uh, District 1. And he's been in that position since June. And prior to serving in the office, he worked at our Door County Economic Development as the executive director. And then also prior to that, he also worked in uh, real estate financing. So with that, I'd like to introduce Caleb Frostman. All right, well, thank you for having me. It's really an honor to be here today. And uh, I can't tell you how refreshing it is to come to an event just to celebrate. And uh, uh, there's lots to celebrate. And if it sounds like I was celebrating, I was at the Packers game on Monday night. Uh, so if I sound like Louis Armstrong, I apologize. But um, really wanted to say two things, keep it really brief today. Uh, start off by saying uh, congratulations. Uh, congratulations for an awesome project um, that uh, I'm excited to see you know, what it's going to provide for our seniors in this county, what it's going to do for that community, uh, what it's going to do for our community overall. And then as Ken mentioned, as a recovering real estate professional, um, you know, seeing this adaptive reuse of a really historic, uh, creative uh, building, uh, it's really inspiring to see what, what folks can do when they come together and work hard and compromise it, you know, put a big vision uh, out in front of themselves and work really hard to get it done. And then the second piece is, is just a, a thank you uh, for that hard work that I know these projects are not easy. They require a lot of planning, a lot of preparation, uh, and likely a lot of tums and uh, other things as uh, the anxiety and heartburn builds. But uh, this is an incredible project that I'm really excited about that uh, you know, I understand uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't happen overnight. And so thank you for the hard work. And just know that that hard work uh, is noticed, uh, it's appreciated, and it'll be appreciated for generations to come. So thanks for having me, and congratulations on a great project. Next, I'd like to have uh, Joel Kitchens come up and, and say a word. Joel Kitchens is our state assembly representative, which again is also considered part of uh, District 1. Uh, he has served as our representative since 2014. And prior to that, uh, he and his wife were involved in their own business for veterinary work. So Joel Kitchens, please. Well, thank you. It's, it's an honor for me, too, to be, to be part of this. Um, you know, I'm lucky enough to, to work in what I think is the prettiest building in the state, the state capitol. Um, you know, the, the current capitol was, was finished in 1917. The capitol prior to that had been destroyed by a fire in 1904. And I think we're really lucky that the, the people in charge at that time had the vision to realize that, the, the, that what they did um, was going to be something that they needed to do something that all Wisconsinites could be proud of and, and it would be a symbol for, for the state of Wisconsin. Um, you know, I hate to think what a replacement would look like right now if, if it were rebuilt. I'm afraid we might be in a pole building. Um, you know, I definitely understand the need to be, to be frugal in, in when you spend with government, but, you know, sometimes architecture beyond the utilitarian role um, can just be a powerful statement about, you know, who we are as a community and what things are important to us. Um, and I think that this building makes that statement. Um, you know, first off, <laughs> preserved a very beautiful and historic building and, and turned it into this, you know, this, which is just wonderful. And I think it's something that, um, <laughs> I have a little trouble here. I think it's something that we will all be, our whole community is going to be very proud of long after all of us are gone. Um, I think it's going to be a tangible reminder of how important the, our retired people as well as our disabled people are to us as a community. Um, so you may have heard that Door County is, is one of, one of the oldest counties in the state. Um, there are a couple counties that are actually older. They're up there along the border with the UP. And the reason they're older really is because there just are no opportunities for young people there. So all of the young people have left and the, only the old people remain. So that's really sort of unhealthy as a community. But Door County, I think we're older because we've become sort of a, a destination for retired people. Um, 
and because of what a wonderful quality of life we have here for, for retired people. I, I meet so many people when I go around the state that vacation here or good luck to the next people coming. Uh, that vacation here or have summer homes up here and um, you know they dream that someday they'll be able to retire up up here. Um, you know, we, we do struggle with, with retaining our young people, but, but I think that's the, the main reason that, that we are sort of an older county. Anyway, I think that, that, that this building is just going to add tremendously to the quality of life for our retired people as well as our disabled people. Um, you know, this is an important place, of course, for information and advice and assistance, but beyond, beyond that, I think it's just an important meeting place. Um, you know, retirement can be pretty lonely. You, you don't meet people as easily as you, as you did when you were, you know, in the workforce. And this is a place where retired people can get together with people, other people that they have a lot in common with. They can eat liver, liver and onions and play sheep's head. Um, <laughs> you know, our community gains so much from the talent and the wisdom and experience of, of our retired people. And, um, and, I, and I think this is going to make it so much more easy for them to stay, stay connected to our community. Uh, you know, I truly believe that this, this center is going to be of value to people of all ages in our community. So really today I'd like to thank the people that turned a vision into this, you know, beautiful reality. The people that, that work at the ADRC, the Health and Human Services, as well as the county board, because I know politically this was a, a difficult thing to get done and it, and it took a long time. But, um, but thank you for doing that and thanks for being here. All right, I have to adjust the well a little bit just to make sure the next speaker can. Does that work? And if I speak like that for our next speaker as well? Excellent. Uh, our next speaker is Ann Olson. Uh, she's the Director of Office uh, for Resource Center Development at Wisconsin's Department of Health Services. She has been with the department for 19 years, and this is kind of her area of specialty. And what we were really kind of excited when we reached out to her is that she has the opportunity to work throughout the state and to see other centers throughout the state. And I think it's just one of those things that we're excited to have Ann up here to not only see our building, but actually provide some input of what she's seen across the state. So Ann, would you please come up? Thank you. I am very honored to be here. I, can, you, can people hear me? OK. I know that there is a hearing loop in the floor here, and this is very important to use. So can you hear me now? Nope? Yes? Great. So I am, yes. Oh, I can handhold it. OK. I actually, um, great. OK. So I'm very, very honored to be here. And this is a beautiful, beautiful building, very innovative. It accomplishes all of the things that we want to see in communities that support aging and disability resources. It is a model and clearly communicates that Door County really cares about not just people who are older, people who may be facing challenges with disabilities, but their caregivers, their families, the community around everyone. Really, community is really key and this building is a clear message that community is valued in Door County. Um, I, I really feel that um, just as uh, the previous Mr. Kitchens, the previous speaker mentioned, isolation and loneliness, they are, we now know, associated with poor health outcomes. And by building this beautiful building, allowing a, uh, allowing a place for people to come together, to build community, to grow older, to stay connected, you're really, Door County is investing in positive health outcomes. This is, this building, and not only just the building, but the innovative services that are provided within the building are a model for the state. I, I came into this building expecting to see something pretty great. This blew me away. It is amazing. It's a model for, yeah, it's, it's not just a model for aging and disability resource centers, it's a model for any building in the state that wants to be accessible and, and beautiful. I mean, accessible, people sometimes think, oh, it's accessible, it's gonna have hold bars in the bathroom, it's not gonna be very attractive. That is just not true. Easy and accessible is the right thing for everyone. Everybody likes easy. So this building just hits, I mean, it just hits every nail on the head. And I'm so pleased to be able to be here. 
I do want to mention a couple of other things. Um, I did uh, note that the services in this building are innovative. I do want to put, make a shout out to Jake. Jake Erickson is your ADRC director. He has, yup, yeah, I don't know where he is. So, hi Jake. <laughs> So what he has done with the services inside of this beautiful building is he's created an integrated service model that we really love at the state. That's a model where, where information and assistance, information and referral, options counseling, benefits counseling, counseling is combined with really community-based services. You have a beautiful exercise room here. You have prevention and wellness programming. You have a lovely, um, meal preparation facility here where you can provide, and I, I've, and I know that you still have the same cook from when I was up here a couple of years ago, and I've heard he's awesome. Um, so, you know, those services within this building, this building now mirrors those, in, those innovative services that you have here. So you are, if you don't already know, which you probably do, you are blessed to have such a fantastic community support and service set here in Door County. Um, let me just see if I wanted to say anything else. Um, so just so you know, so you might think, oh, this is, you know, oh, Door County is, it's great, it's, a, it's the top of the state, absolutely. But that also means it's the top of the nation. The state of Wisconsin's ADRC system is actually a national model for aging and disability resource services. So you're looking at something that's top of the state that's also top of the nation. So congratulations, and thank you so much for letting me be here. Thank you, and those are some very uh, kind words. Um, one thing I forgot to mention before I started, and it, just to put it in a context, we have it on the program if you have it, um, but on the very back, when you're sitting in this building, just to give a little bit of reference, uh, you can actually see in the bottom picture, you can see WPA in 1936. So this was actually done under the Roosevelt's New Deal program, the Works Progress Administration in 1936. So it just kind of gives reference that we're sitting in a building of this age, and if you can imagine what it was originally used for, um, it just kind of puts this whole discussion in context. And with that, uh, just to continue on, obviously one of the things that I think is what you'll hear throughout the presentation today is the ability to work together and build partnerships and build that momentum. And I'd like to introduce uh, Thad Birmingham. He's the mayor for the city of Sturgeon Bay. Obviously, we're in the city. And <clears throat> the reason we wanted to reach out to Thad is because we had a very strong partnership with the city in making this all come together. Working it through the plan commission process, the, the approvals, the site planning, it was critical that we had this partnership. And I we wanted to recognize the city as part of that partnership. So, Thad. Thank you, Ken, thank you. Uh, my mother was a, a real proponent of uh, the old senior center. That's what she referred to it as. And I know that, <laughs> I know that if, she, uh, if she were still here, she would really approve of this building because this is really, truly a nice and a beautiful uh, reuse of an existing piece of property. Um, and timing, of course, timing is everything. I just turned 60, so it couldn't have happened soon enough. I mean, I'm really looking forward to spending some quality time here uh, in the not too distant future. But um, Ken, yeah, it was a, it was a real pleasure uh, being able to work with the county on this. Uh, my hat's off to the county board and for all those tough decisions that were talked about earlier. Um, you know, sometimes it, it is more about um, what you can accomplish than, than just the financial part of it. So um, this was an opportunity, and I'm glad the county board seized on it. I think they definitely made the right decision. And um, I, I, too, will be brief. I, I would like to say the first, uh, the first proposal that I saw for this building um, was a manure-to-energy building facility. And um, I can tell you that this thing looks a lot better than that, and I'll guarantee you, I'll guarantee you, it smells better than that would have been. So thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. Thank you to County Board. Um, this is a beautiful uh, addition to the, not only the county, but certainly the city, too, and, and we're very proud to have it uh, located within our boundaries. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ted. <clears throat> 
Okay, we're gonna have just two more speakers, um, and they're both county board supervisors. And the main intent is maybe just to kind of give more of a story behind how this all came together. Um, I was gonna let Jake do it, but he usually brings up some type of Bears reference, so we're not letting him speak whatsoever. So he's been banned. So <clears throat> our, our first one is uh, Dan Osted. He's our he's our longest serving county board supervisor. He's been on the county board for 35 years. Um, and he served as our county board chair for four, and he's now our chairman of our facilities and parks. And Dan's just gonna uh, maybe walk us through a story of kind of how this all came together. So Dan. Uh, actually, we have a disagreement on the county board. I've been on the county board the longest, but Ken Fisher consecutively is the longest serving. So just so you get that straight. Um, I might ramble on here a little bit and squint, but I had cataract surgery at 11 o'clock this morning, so my eyes aren't just perfectly in sync yet. But it just shows you how fantastic it is today to have things done like that. Uh, I can remember my mother laying in bed with sandbags on her side, and et cetera, et cetera. This was at 11 o'clock this morning. And also, when I use the word we, I'm referencing the county board, the staff, the architects, the city, all working together. Um, I'll bet you we had at least over 100 meetings on this, and almost entirely unanimously, every time when we settled an issue, we had arguments and disagreements now, but we served it just about perfect through the whole process. We didn't really have anything negative at all. It all started, in my, and this is through my eyes, not through anybody else's. It all started about 15 years ago when the hospital sort of informed us that they wanted us to move the MS building because they wanted to do something with the entrance. And over the years, that building where the MS was getting older and needed repair. Our ambulances were getting bigger. They didn't fit anymore. And we had an additional uh, shift put on the ambulance service or the EMS service. And also, it went co-ed. So uh, that's one of the reasons we wanted to replace that. And it initially was that the county and the city, I mean, and the county and the hospital were gonna locate it across from the Y. Uh, behind the surgical center there. And um, they wanted to lease us the land. And they wanted to lease us, I think, for 40 or 50 years. Well, some of us balked at that. And uh, we tried to buy the land. And we talked that over for one or two or three years, and that didn't work out. And um, so the reason we didn't want to lease it, there were some wordings in the lease that a lot of us didn't agree with. At the same time, the Senior Citizen Center was starting to go downhill. Needed some tender, loving care. Um, it was a metal building. It was built 35, 40 years ago. It had no room, bad kitchen. Everything was just about bad about it. We talked about remodeling it. And along with that, Bug was building a fire department down in Brussels, and they wanted us to locate, or we wanted to locate the ambulances down there so they had better quarters, okay? And what really propelled this, the rumor from some of the county board members out there that there was a million dollar gift out there for the Senior Citizen Center. Well, as that turned out, that was only a rumor. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we got plans for both buildings, uh, the Senior Citizen Center building right over here, and the uh, ambulance garage EMS department out by the hospital. And um, we hired architects to do some, got some plans, some preliminary plans. We didn't get the full building plans. And um, they were both gonna cost, we think, uh, I, I, these aren't correct figures, but they're close. Uh, the EMS building was gonna cost about $5 million. The new senior citizen center was gonna cost approximately $6 million. So for a, a total of about 10 or $11 million. And also with the, uh, uh, senior Citizen Center, there was maybe going to have to put a stormwater runoff system that would cost a million dollars. Okay, now at this time, we still haven't come into agreement to buy the property from the hospital. So we at the county board uh, 
meant and met and thought, why don't we look into the old highway garage? And some of us made the comment that since this was going to cost $11 million, I can't believe we couldn't rehab this for 6 or $7 million and save a few dollars for the taxpayer. So uh, we instructed the property committee to uh, look into it and get a feasibility study. Uh, prior to that, we had talked about doing something with this building. One, we talked about making the Parks Department come here. We talked about having the maintenance people come out here. At one time, someone approached us to have the school buses parked here. Um, Palmer and Johnson did rent it for quite a while. Of course, they're gone. Or we could tear it down. So the tearing down, and I had forgotten about the, the plant that Thad said that, uh, of the manure thing, which got turned down by us at one time. So when we got the plans back, they said it was possible to do it. They said it could be done, the architects, and it would really be cool. Uh, and then we went out and got final building plans. While we were doing this, we took a lot of flack from a lot of people saying, and you gotta be uh, crazy to do this because the walls were all black, the ceiling was black, the outside was beautiful. But if anybody would have told you that when this came done, that it was going to look like this, and they knew it before we did it, they're lying, because it was terrible. If you remember the back half of that, or the front half, whatever you want to call it, there was a second floor in there, and that was all ripped out, and we gutted it, so when we did go for bids, that the bidder would have a better shot at doing it right. So we went out and took a gamble and gutted the whole building, and uh, some of us were still taking this flack for pollution, for uh, smell, for too much diesel stuff in. This floor that you're on right now was 18 inches deeper, about 18 inches deeper than the other floor. So we took the floors out, put all new floors in. When it came to the bids, the price tag came back basically the same if we would build two brand new buildings. But we saved this building and uh, it, it just turned out just beautiful. I, I guess, um, in my opinion, um, if we were to replace this building now, it, it's somewhere around 10 million it cost us. I, I, I would bet you 15 million dollars to do it the way it is now, especially with the stonework and all that. When we were in here, all this stonework was all there. It was original. You just had to clean it off. So that's pretty much about how it all evolved. That's it. Thanks, Dan. I guess our next speaker, is, as Dan corrected, is, is our <coughs> longest active serving county board member. <laughs> Make sure I get that right. So, But uh, Ken Fisher, he's been on our county board since 2002. He has served as our vice chair since 2016. And he's also been involved in both the property and also facilities and grounds, our facilities and parks committee. And uh, Supervisor Fisher is going to, I guess, provide a little bit of a background of, you know, once we decided to move, you know, what were the key players and what were the key milestones that we hit to make this all come together. So, Mr. Fisher. Thank you. Is this thing on? All right. Uh, I have to start by telling you a quick story. When I, is this better? When I graduated from college, university, whatever, in the comics, you can tell if it's a Canadian writing the comic strip because they always talk about going to university. If it's American writer, they go to college. Anyway, when I graduated, I, I took a private oath that I would never, ever give another speech in my life. That was it. But here I am. I'm not a speech giver. I'm not a politician. I'm a local elected official. So I have to have it written for me. And to clarify what Dan was talking about, I have him and Mr. Verley by two months, and uh, uh, you probably all know the story of that. 
And here, about, uh, what is it, 16, 17 years later, it's still a point of contention. And I can needle them by telling them, yeah, you guys got more years in, but you had to start over from scratch. I've got you by two months. So anyway, with that being said, on behalf of the County Board of Supervisors, I'm pleased to welcome you all to our building dedication. Supervisor Austin provided the background of how the decision was made to move forward. Now I'd like to provide some background on how the project was accomplished. Any project of this size that affects the taxpayers always makes it difficult for supervisors to make a decision. In our case, the county board worked together to discuss the needs and balance our long-term vision. By working together and sharing our concerns, the county board was able to make a decision that was unanimous, as Mr. Austin said. It wasn't always, but the final vote, I believe, was to move forward with the project. I'd like to uh, have the past and current county board supervisors please stand and be recognized at this point in time. Thank you. For a construction project of this size, it takes three critical areas to make the decision uh, a reality. First, you need a team that can see beyond the dirt and grime, and there was a lot of it, and see the potential for what a building can offer. To develop this vision, we had venture architects who did an excellent job in designing the facility that Door County can be proud of. Did you say whether their representatives are here or not? No? All right. Second, you need a team that can help ensure you are getting the best bang for your buck and that insured issues were handled. To manage this vision, we had Immel Construction as a construction manager. Third, you need a team that can take uh, what you see on paper and make it what, it, what you see today. To impl implement this vision, we had IEI as our general contractor. I'm pleased to announce that with the team of Venture Architects, Immel Construction, and IEI, that Door County has received two Build Wisconsin awards through the Associated General Contractors of Wisconsin. One award is a Historic Preservation Award, and the second is for renovation of an existing structure. Finally, I'd like to recognize a few people within our organization who were instrumental in doing the work behind the scenes. I'd like to thank Joel Krasbach. Joel? All right. Oh, you're not gonna stand up? And Aaron LeClaire, and I thought I saw him before, Aaron LeClaire. Uh, with their, uh, along with their staff. They put in countless hours making sure the design of the facility met our long-term needs. I'd like to thank uh, Corp Council Grant Thomas, Finance Director, retired, Mark Janiak, and Ken Pavich. It was their leadership that helped guide us through all of the logistics, legal matters, and of course, financing. Lastly, I'd like to thank Wayne Spritka, and Wayne is here, the property uh, the director here for that department who was our, our internal project manager. He spent countless hours working with all the players involved in making sure we had a smooth project. And I know from being in the committee meetings, he did spend countless hours. I'm not just saying that. I wonder if you ever kept track of that, Ken? No? <laughs> Calculator wouldn't add that high? Okay. It was with this leadership team that we had a project that was done on time and under budget. I'd like to close by stating that I believe that we have a community and emergency service center that we can be proud of now and into the future. This building started its story in 1936, as was already said, and with this dedication today, we are continuing that story for many, many years to come. And before I go on, you should all give yourselves a round of applause because we as county board supervisors, yeah, we make decisions, but we didn't reach into our pockets. It was you that, that it's your dollars. You, you paid for this. Your taxes are paying for this. And all of you people deserve a round of applaud, applause. So take credit for it. At this time, we'd like to dedicate the building plaque. And I'd like to call Mr. Osted and Mr. Richard Biz Verley up here. Biz was past chairman of this committee, uh, the building committee, and very instrumental and vocal in its... Uh, uh, in the building project. Ken didn't tell you the reason why he outranks us. 
It was because of the recall. Business, business and I got kicked out for a while. <laughs> and the contention cool. still is whether it was a full two months or just six weeks, like they say. <laughs> so what do you want us to do? Unveil it. Unveil it? Unveil it? Okay. Let's spill it. Got it? Got it, There we go. There you go. That's it, huh? One more time, it was a tremendous effort and uh, a team effort that got this all done. Well, I'd like to thank you all again for attending. Uh, the building, obviously, we have both coffee, refreshments um, in this side. Also, if you go down the corridor, we do have uh, our emergency services. Part of the building is open there as well. Again, if you recall, they mentioned the award. Not only did we get an award for our historic preservation, but we also got an award for our renovation. And part of that aspect of the renovation is how we tied in the new part of the emergency services actually into this building. So I think when you actually go over there and take a look at it, you'll see that it's been integrated um, and it fits very well in terms of how this whole site came together. So, and also they also have treats over there too, which is also, oh, do they? No, you don't. Oh, they're all over here. Shh, there's no treats. Okay, you guys got a kitchen. Get over there, bake some cookies real quick. But anyways, thank you very much. And again, uh, we'll have a band start up in a little bit. And thank you all for coming. We did a waltz time, everybody. We're going to do the blue skirt waltz, and please sing along.
Thank you.